An interesting day in the world of the NBA, or I guess I should say an interesting day in the world of reporting in the NBA, where you had Chris Haynes initially report that the Phoenix Suns have notified Chris Paul that he will be waived by making him one of the top free agents this offseason. And you had NBA Twitter react in shock that the Suns would actually opt to waive CP3 over simply finding a trade option to move him or even stretch his contract. You had content creators already putting out articles and videos about Chris Paul getting waived, and then just a few hours later, you had Sham Sharania and shortly thereafter Adrian Wojnarowski that actually, hey, the Suns are simply just exploring options. That he hasn't in fact been waived, but rather exploring options in the form of a trade, stretching his contract, or even waiving him and re-signing him to a more team-friendly deal, which that makes much more sense. So kind of a bad look for Chris Haynes, who might have jumped the gun a bit on this one for whatever sources he was getting his information from. But nevertheless, in an unexpected turn of events for the Suns, who went all in to land Kevin Durant, are potentially looking to move on from the 38-year-old veteran Chris Paul, who really helped usher in that new era of the Suns being a competitive basketball team again and helping take the team to the finals in his first season with the franchise. But if Chris Paul is in fact going to be on the move this offseason, where would be some options that would make sense for him as he plays the final years of his career and what does the future hold for one of the greatest point guards to ever do it if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video and in return i'll be providing more nba content like this now the reason this has come to a surprise by most around the nba community is because well yes chris paul is obviously not the player he used to be he's not the star level player that he once was and of course he has struggled to stay healthy and being on the court especially when it matters in the postseason but be all that as it may, he's still a very capable and serviceable point guard. He has that veteran leadership and IQ that a team like the Suns needs, and really any team for that matter, and he's a floor general that can get the most out of his teammates while also producing on both ends of the floor in terms of scoring and defense. Again, not like he used to, but even at his age, he was still able to average 14 points per game, 9 assists, and 37% shooting from 3 on over 4 attempts per game. Love him or hate him because he is a pretty polarizing player in the NBA. He's still a starting level point guard in the NBA and obviously one of the greatest point guards in NBA history. And for a team like the Suns that have the star power, the strong starting lineup, but also very little depth after making the trade for Kevin Durant, there aren't a lot of options to replace Chris Paul in that starting role. Like really, campaign is their best option. And for a team that needs a floor general, a facilitator who is a true point guard and is okay not getting up a lot of shot attempts and deferring to others, that's a big loss when you remove a point guard that is going to get Kevin Durant and Booker the looks they need for them to be at their best. And again, very possible the Suns wave Paul just to have him re-sign on a more team-friendly deal to give them some flexibility on their cap sheet to round out their roster. Because here's the thing, the Suns, if they were to fully guarantee CP3 salary for this upcoming season, because keep in mind it is only partially guaranteed as of right now, the Suns would need to fully guarantee it before free agency hits. But if they were to fully guarantee his deal, the Suns would be right at that first tax apron line with all the salary commitments they have, and that wouldn't even include some of their own free agents, which would certainly put them over the luxury tax line and even close to the second tax apron, which has been implemented this offseason under the new CBA rules or the quote unquote super tax, if you will which if the Suns go into the luxury tax would forgo their ability to use the full non-tax pyramid level exception since that would be a luxury tax paying team. By waiving CP3 or even waive and stretching his contract, they could potentially get well under the tax line to the tune of near $26 million under that line, based on my rough calculations of their current payroll anyway, which, if that ended up being the case, would free up the full non-tax pyramid level exception for them to use to sign another free agent. And that would be the only way for them to be able to sign a free agent that isn't their own since they're an over-the-cap team. Convoluted, I know, and it's hard explaining the mechanics of the salary cap, luxury tax aprons, and exceptions to the cap, bird rights, all that good stuff, but the point is, that's the one reason why the Suns could look to waive Chris Paul. Either waiving him entirely and letting him go to some other team, or waiving his current contract and re-signing him on a cheaper deal because it would enable the Suns to sign a player or players via the mid-level exception, whereas they would otherwise not be able to do so under the new CBA rules. But let's say for a moment, because again, this is a very likely scenario. The Suns don't want Chris Paul. They want to move on from him and they actually don't have any interest on waiving him and then re-signing him in a free agency. So what would a move for Chris Paul look like? 
Now, I'm going to throw out the possibility of a trade because I really can't see any team being willing to take on Chris Paul's contract in a trade and giving up assets also to do so, which you would have to give up a lot given you would have to send a big contract to the Suns to match salary. Since if you do make a trade for CP3, you would have to fully guarantee his contract for this upcoming season, which is set to be $30.8 million, and then you would still have another year left on his deal at $30 million. That, of course, is partially guaranteed. I just can't see another team wanting to trade for Chris Paul at that contract and at his age, not unless the Suns threw in some draft capital to sweeten the deal, which they don't have draft picks because they gave up the majority of their draft assets in the Kevin Durant trade. So I'm ruling out a trade because I don't see how the Suns are going to be able to move Chris Paul's contract, even for teams that would actually benefit from Paul's services. Thus, we're going to go the waving route. Suns wave Chris Paul. They say thanks for the services and the memories, but best of luck to you on your next chapter. They take the hit on his partial guarantee that they would still owe him, but they're also getting the non-guaranteed portion off their books. That would then allow for Chris Paul to be an unrestricted free agent and sign wherever he pleases. Now, for a vet minimum deal at a cheap rate, there would be a lot of teams that would be interested in Chris Paul, even if it was just for the mentorship of their younger players they're looking to develop. I mean, you talk about a team like the Orlando Magic, Detroit Pistons, even the Houston Rockets, who would love to have some veteran leadership and mentorship on their roster on a vet minimum deal to actually work and develop their younger players. But we all know Chris Paul isn't going to go on one of those teams, even if they offered him more money, because at this stage in his career, Chris Paul knows this is his last chance to win a title one of the few greats and future Hall of Famers who doesn't have a ring. We all know that's what he wants. He's come close a few times, but then unfortunately gets injured. Everyone thought this was going to be the season where he gets one after the Suns traded for Kevin Durant, but no, Chris Paul, if he doesn't re-sign with the Suns, is going to be looking to go to a contender. A team like the Boston Celtics who are in need of a true point guard, or the Philadelphia 76ers also in the same boat. Hell, maybe even the Miami Heat who are clearly a contender given they're in the NBA Finals right now and will also have some big decisions to make in terms of losing some of their key rotational guards who are set to become free agents. Or maybe a team like the Clippers go back to the Clips and try to win their franchise, their first title with Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Maybe even the Lakers go to the team that David Stern prevented him from joining after blocking the trade years ago that could have led to an NBA title with Kobe Bryant. But between all of those options, I personally think the best fit would be with the Boston Celtics. I don't really want to see that happen because I personally don't like the Celtics, but Chris Paul in Boston would make the most sense among contending teams just given the fact that the roster is very talented. They play great team basketball. They've got the younger star players, the depth off the bench, quality role players, great defensive team. The one thing the Celtics lack is a true starting point guard. Marcus Smart doesn't cut it. And also veteran experience, leadership, and a player to keep their young core grounded when the going gets tough, which they have run into a lot in not being able to get over the hump year after year in winning a title. Again, I don't necessarily like it, but it makes the most sense for Chris Paul if he truly wants to go somewhere for his best chance at winning a ring. Not saying some of these other teams I mentioned can't get him there, but the fit, the young talent for which the Celtics have, and the fact that they have made it to the finals last season, they nearly pulled off an 0-3 comeback against the Heat in going to the finals yet again this year, is going to make the most sense for Chris Paul. So if it's not the Suns, I see Chris Paul joining the Celtics on a vet minimum deal or somewhere around there if slightly above that. I guess the Heat could be a viable option as well, but I don't know. I can get the sense that Jimmy and Chris Paul might butt heads a little on the same team. I could be wrong though, but where do you think it would make the most sense for Chris Paul to go in the event he is in fact waived by the Suns, which at the time of this recording still has not been confirmed. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.